Assalamualaikum my good day to everyone Today we continue our new topic on kinetic of a particle Force and acceleration The objective of the lecture today number 1 To describe the particle motion that has relationship between force and acceleration Based on Newton's second law Number 2 To describe the particle motion As caused by the forces Using the equations of motion Number 3 To draw free body diagram And kinetic diagram For an acceleration particle Overall At the end of the lecture You should be able to determine The time, position, displacement Velocity, speed and acceleration Of a kinetic kinetic particle by using equations of motion now the chapters outline of today is number 1, 9.1 Newton's second law of motion, 9.2 the equations of motion for a system of particle right, so here that is a summary, so now we study the kinetic so what is a kinetic kinetic is a study of particle motion as caused by the forces, so here we going to uh, distinguish into two part. So number part number one, we want to study what is the Newton second law of motion. Okay, number two, you going to study what is the equation of motion. So this equation of motion divided by two, you can describe in the rectangular coordinate x and y x y z, and also the second one we going to study the fixed curve. What is the fixed curve? Fixed curves, we are using the normal and tangent as it is. So, overall, by using this equation, by using this uh, equation of motion, you should be able to find force and acceleration. So, that is why we are using the second law of motion. So, because the second law of motion says that F is equal to M A. So, M here is a mass. And A here is the acceleration. So, F is the force. What what kind of force? So, we are we are analyze the what force? External forces. So, you must remember here, by using the equation of motion, we only can obtain force and acceleration. So, how about the kinematics? The kinematic variable. So, let's say velocity, speed and position. So, how are we going to use this? So, after we determine uh, any one force or acceleration, so you may use the equations of kinematic. Understand? Next, let's start with Newton's law of motion. So, we have three laws of motion. First law... A particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line at constant velocity will remain in this state of the resultant force acting on the particle is zero. Second law, if the resultant force on the particle is not zero, the particle experiences an, an acceleration in the same direction as the resultant force. This acceleration has a magnitude proportional to the resultant force. And then the third law, mutual force of action and reaction between two particles are equal, opposite and collinear. collinear. So, which law used in static and which law used in dynamic? Let's guess. Okay, now the first and third law were used in static and then Newton's second law were used in dynamics. Understand? So now, what is the Newton's second law? So in mathematical, Newton's second law of motion can be right. F is equal to ma. What is the F? So normally, F is the resultant unbalanced force acting on the particle. So what is M? M is the mass and then what is the a a is the accelerations of particle so can you guess what is the unbalanced force here so after this we're going to identify what is the resultant unbalanced force okay so now we have the limitation here so newton's second law 
cannot be used when the particle speed approach the speed of light or if the size of particle is extremely small. Okay, next. Newton's law of gravitational attraction. So, here, any two particle or body have a mutual attractive gravitational force acting between them. So, Newton postulated the law governing this gravitational force as a F is equal to G M1 M2 divided by R squared. So, what is the force? What is the F? F is the force attraction between two bodies. And then what is the G? G is the constant gravity. And what is the M1, M2? So definitely M1 is the mass of the body 1. M2 is the mass for the body 2. And then what is the R? R is the distance between centers of the two bodies. Okay, so here, when the near surface of the earth, the only gravity force having any sizable magnitude is that between the earth and the body. So, this force is called weight of the body, W. So, normally, where is the weight acting at the body? Can you remember? Okay, here. Now, we want to study... What is the difference between mass and weight of a body? So here, mass is an absolute property of a body. And then, it is independent of the gravity field in which it is measured. And then, mass provides a measure of the resistance of body to change in velocity. As defined by Newton's second law. So, we have... F is equal to MA. So, to get the M, M can be calculated by M is equal to F divided by A. And then, the weight of body is not absolute since it depends on the gravity. So, weight is become W is equal to MG. So, what is the M? M is the mass. And then, what is the G? G is the Acceleration due to gravity. Next, mass and weight in SI. What is the SI? SI is the international system. So, it means that overall in the world, we are using the SI unit. So, here in the SI system of unit, mass is a base unit so we call it as a m so typically mass is specified in kg kilogram and then weight so weight is the derived unit so weight is become w is equal to mg and then weight can be specified in what unit weight so if you are using the Gravity acceleration, gravity acceleration is measured in meter per second square. So then we you can express in Newton. So as usual in steady we are using on the earth surface G can be taken as nine point eight one meter per second square. So when you calculate we you can have it in Newton. Next, FPS. What is the FPS? FPS is called foot pound second system. So where, what is the country that is using the FPS? You have to find it, alright? Okay, so in the FPS system, weight, weight is become, what? Weight is become base unit. So, typically, weight is measured or specified in pound. So, now, mass is become derived unit in FPS. So, mass is become W divided by G. So, normally, mass in the FPS unit is expressed in slang. Right? 
so here on the earth surface the acceleration gravity is using 32.2 foot per second square understand right now 9.2 is equation of motion. So here, what is the equation of motion? So the motion of a particle is governed by Newton's second law, relating the unbalanced force on particle to its acceleration. So if more than one force acts on a particle, the equation of motion can be written. Summation force is equal to Force resultant is equal to m a because from the Newton's law we have force is equal to m a. So now f r is the resultant force, which is a vector summation for all forces. Next, so now we're going to have two diagram. Okay, number one. We need to illustrate the equation. Consider a particle at on by two forces. So here, this is a particle. So this particle we have F1 and F2. So this is the moving. So the moving to the left. So here we have the acceleration to the left. So now, towards the... Uh, this lecture, you're going to first draw the particle free body diagram, show all the forces acting on the particle. So, let's say this is the first free body, FBD. So, here, you sketch. Let's say we have F1. Here, we have F2. Okay, so definitely, um, the result from F1, F2, we have the summation force. Or the force resultant. So you're going to have like this lah. F is equal to F R is equal to F1 plus F2. Right. Okay. Next, we need to draw the kinetic diagram to show the initial force M A acting in the same direction as the resultant force. So here. You need to sketch the kinetic diagram to show the direction. So, here we're going to have M, A. So, remember, eh? So, the free body diagram gives you force and then kinetic diagram gives you the direction of moving. So, M, A here. Okay? Understand how to sketch the Free body diagram of the particle to show all the forces. And then next to draw the kinetic diagram. So we have the limitation here. Initial frame or reference. So this equation, which is summation force is equal to MA, is only valid if the acceleration is measured in Newton or initial frame of reference. So what is this mean? So, number one, for problems concerned with motion at or near the Earth's surface, we typically assume our initial frame to be fixed to the Earth. So, we neglect any acceleration effect from the Earth rotation. And then, number two, for problems involving satellites or rockets, the initial frame of reference is fixed to the star. Next. So, the equation of motion for a system of particle. Just now, we uh, sketched the free body diagram for one particle. So, now what happened in the system of particle? So, let's say here, you may refer to this figure, initial coordinate system. So, now we have many particles. So, each of particle is subjected to the force. So, let's say we have F is the external force. And then a uh, small f means the internal force. So the equation for motion can be extended to include system of particle. This includes a motion of solid, liquids, or gas. As in static, there are internal force and external forces acting the system. So what is the difference between them? So by using this 
mass is equal to summations of internal mass as the total mass of particle and AG as the acceleration of center of mass, which is um, MAG is equal to summations of MI and AI. Okay, for a system of particle, summation force is equal to MAG. So we understood that summation F is the sum of external force. So here, summation for the internal force, if we carry out, will become zero. Since internal force between any two particles occur in equal but opposite collinear pair. So some of the external force will remain. So the equation of motion in a system of particle. So number one. So the key point number one. Newton's second law is a law of nature. Experimentally proven not the result of an analytical proof. So number two. Mass. So mass is a measure of the resistant to change in velocity. And then we have weight. So weight depends on the local gravity force. So we can uh, calculate the weight of object is an application. So we can have weight is equal to mg. So number four, unbalanced force. So unbalanced force causes the acceleration of object. So the condition is fundamental to the dynamic problem. This one, unbalanced force. So we we going to study what is the unbalanced forces. So this question you're going to answer in the pop quiz session. Right. So what is the application? Why we need to study the equation of motion? Because we want to analyze the motion of the object depends on the force acting on it. For this example, knowing the drag force, how can we determine the acceleration or velocity of the this parachute? Okay, next, let's say we have the baggage truck. A tows a cut B and then cut C. Here, right. So, how are we are going to know the friction force developed at the driving wheel of the truck? And then, how are we going to determine the acceleration? Right. And then, how we can determine the horizontal force? How? So, we're going to use the equations of motion to solve these kinds of problem. Right, next, a free elevator is lift using a motor attached to a cable or pulley system. So, how are we going to study? How are we going to determine the tension here? How to calculate the tension here? So, definitely... We need to get, we need, we need to use the equation of motion, okay, to determine the tension in the force, and then what is the acceleration? Okay, here step four analysis. So we have four step here. Number one, we need to establish the initial coordinate system. Number two, we need to draw two diagram. Number one. Free body diagram to show all the external forces on the particle. And then number two, we need to draw the kinetic diagram to show particle initial force MA. So this one you need to, to understand, lah, to define. Is it force moving to the right or to the left? Right? And then number three, you can apply the equation of motion in the scalar component to solve the Unknown problems. And then number four, you should be able to apply kinematic reaction to generate additional equation. Understand? Next, what is the external force? So normally, the external force involves in terms of what? We have here weight. And then, what else internal force? We have normal force and friction force fk and then the last one we have applied force so what is the friction force so normally friction force act opposite to the directions of 
motion. And then what else? What force we going to have? So let's say if the particle is connected to the linear spring. So what is the force from the spring? So you must remember F F F S means that spring force is equal to K S. Right? So you must remember how you going to analyze the external forces in the question. Okay, now let's go to the example 9.1. So here we have a 25 kg block is subjected to force equal to 100. The spring, okay, we have spring here. The spring has stiffness of K 200 newton per meter and is unstretched line when the block is at A. Okay, the contact surface is smooth. So, draw the free body and kinetic diagram of the block when S is equal to 0 0.4. So, you're going to have two step here. Okay, two step here. Because we want to, question one, to draw the free body diagram and kinetic diagram. So, the first step, we need to sketch the initial coordinate system. So, let's say here the coordinate system, as usual, we have X and Y. And the second step, we're going to draw the free body diagram for the block to show all the external force. Do you remember what is the external force? Okay, number two, draw the kinetic diagram to show the initial force vector. So, where is the block moving? To the right or to the left? You need to ask yourself. Okay, now we have sketched the initial System, initial frame system. So, we have Y and X here. Okay, X and Y. So, number two, we want to draw the free body diagram of the block. So, now, this figure show you the block of the free body diagram. And then, here, we need to show all the external force. So, what is the external force? Number one, we have the weight. So, the question already give us the weight mass is 25. So, now we we know that weight is the derived unit in SI. So, the weight is mg. So, m is 25. Okay, the next, what is the ex unbalanced external force? So, we have applied load. So, applied load here is 100 newton. Okay, so you sketch yeah, the applied load. Okay, next, you have the spring. So, here is the spring force. So, must remember, Fs is equal to Ks. So, K is given 200 in the question. So, what is the S? S is the displacement of the spring. So, you need to calculate what is the displacement. So, the, the deformations of the spring... When S is equal to 0 0.4, so you get 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3 is 0 0.2 meter. So, that's why if you want to calculate the magnitude for the spring force is equal to 200 times 0 0.2. So, it's become 40 newton. So, so now, this is the free body diagram for the block. Next, what diagram we need to sketch? Oh, we have here normal force. We have normal force, right? So, normal force is perpendicular to the surface. So, this is the normal force. Must remember the normal force. Do we have the friction force here? So, for this case, we don't have the friction force because the surface is smooth. Okay. Next, we need to draw the kinetic diagram. So, the block is moving to the left or the right. Okay, here for this case, the block is moving to the right. So, here we understood that the block is equal to MA. So, here you can write M is 25A. You must remember, 
the acceleration can be directed to the right if the block is speeding up and the block can be directed to the left if the block is slowing down. Okay, so this is the end of the answer. So the answer want you to sketch the free body diagram and the kinetic diagram. So here you're going to, if you want to solve the question, then you can have this equation of motion. Summation force is equal to ma. So here you're going to have this is x, this is y. So you can separate what is the force in x and what is the force in y here. So summation fx is equal to max. Summation f1 is equal to 0. Why? Because we don't have the vertical direction. Understand? Next, example 9.2. So we have a 10 kg block is subjected to a force 400 newton. A spring stiffness K is equal to 500 newton per meter. is motor against the block. And then, when S is equal to 0, the block is at rest and the spring is uncompressed. The contact surface is smooth. Draw the free body diagram and kinetic diagram of the block. So, as usual, we're going to have two step. What is the step number one? Number one, we need to sketch the inertial coordinate system. So, for this case, you're going to have X and Y. Number two, you need to draw first the block diagram to show all the external force. And then two, you need to draw the kinetic diagram to show the moving. So, where is your block moving? To the left or to the right? Okay, so here, number one, don't forget the frame. So, this is the coordinate X and Y. And then this is the block. Okay, number two, you need to sketch the free body diagram for the block. So, here you need to identify the external forces. So, as usual, if the question give us mass, so you're going to have the weight. W is equal to mg. So, here you have 10g. And then you have the applied load. Don't forget to write the applied load. And then you have the spring force, Fs. And then you have the normal force. So, normal force must act perpendicular to the surface. And then, do you have the friction force? No, because we have the smooth surface. So, this is the free body diagram of the block. Next, you need to sketch the kinetic diagram. So, the kinetic diagram, we need to show the Moving direction. So, for this case, the block move to the right. So, you have MA here. So, MA. So, M is 10 A. Okay. So, so actually, this is the diagram that you need to sketch when you have the problem. So, number one, what? Free body diagram for the block. And number two, the kinetic diagram. Because after you sketch this T, this uh, two diagram, then you can solve the problem by using the equation of motion. Summation F is equal to Me. So, for this case, you have uh, summation Fx equal to Max. And then summation Fy is equal to Mey. As usual, because we don't have the moving direction in Y. So, here we have 0. Understand? That's all for today. Hope you can achieve the outcome of the lecture, which is number one. To describe the particle motion that has relationship between force and acceleration based on Newton's second law. And then number two, to describe the particle motion causes by the forces using the equation motion. And then number three, to sketch the free body diagram and kinetic diagram for the accelerating particle okay see you for the next lecture bye